Oh, found it. Over mm -hmm. here. Over here. You got the little right? sweater? Yeah. What? You sure? Right there on that leaf. You sure? Look. These just hang, see on, on the leaf? The Cypress Swamp is one of the classic habitats of Florida. These expansive flooded woods covering the southwest region of the state are loaded with some of the most iconic Florida creatures, alligators, cottonmouths, panthers, and so much more. But under the cover of darkness, the depths of the Cypress Swamp reveals some new and unfamiliar faces. The calling of katydids breaks the nighttime silence. Thousands of giant blood-sucking mosquitoes fill the air but it's the eight-legged top predators of the swamp that dominate the night, the spiders. While these habitats are home to a huge variety of strange spiders, one giant, aquatic, and invasive spider in particular has recently shown itself to be a dominant force of this ecosystem with no signs of leaving, and no one knows what it is. I'm Mikey Green, and my goal is to show just how little we really know about the strange creatures living their hidden lives all around us. Usually, I focus on creatures that are simply unknown or misunderstood by the general public, but at least are well understood by scientists. But tonight, we're on a mission bigger than anything I've done on this channel before. We're journeying out into the cypress swamps of southwest Florida at night to solve a many years long mystery. What are these giant mysterious spiders invading the cypress swamps of Florida? Where did they come from? And what impacts might they have on the ecosystem? Sounds easy, right? Yeah, just kidding. This is quite the task I've put on myself, and definitely something we won't be able to do alone. So I asked for some help. Meet Edwin, a local photographer and environmental educator. While his work mostly focuses on birds, he knows the cypress swamps of this area like the back of his hand, and he has connections with researchers at his university who could help solve this mystery once and for all. Only thing is, he didn't say we'd be wading through knee-deep water until after I showed up on site anyways. Let's head out into the cypress swamp and see what all we can find. I'm just gonna go off the trail, or what Edwin calls a trail, real quick, just to look at this beautiful little millipede right here. Haha! <laughs> Check this little guy out. This is a Florida ivory millipede, a pretty common species of millipede out here in marshy and swampy areas all throughout Florida. I see these basically anywhere where it's a marsh habitat or a swamp habitat like this, and they could get absolutely massive. I've seen them get a little bigger than this, but still, this is quite the impressive looking millipede right here. And you can see they call them Florida ivories because of that beautiful shiny off-white color on the belly. So just a gorgeous species of millipede. I'll put this little guy right back and let's keep looking for spiders out here. That was an amazing millipede, but definitely far from what I came all the way over here to find. It's still early in the night though, and it wasn't too long until we found our first spider of the night. Let's take a look. So right here in this trunk of a cypress tree out here in the cypress swamp, is not the spider we're out here looking for, and it's actually one that I see all the time back at home. This is a flatty, also known as a selenops or a crescent-eyed spider. Now, these are really good at fitting into tight crevices, like these little grooves and indentations in this cypress trunk right here. Now, these actually have a really special adaptation that help them survive above the water like this. These, because they're so flat, can actually redirect the trajectory of their fall. That's right, these can almost glide. And because of that, if one of these falls, it can actually reposition itself to fall towards the tree trunk and not fall down into the water below. That weird little seemingly useless adaptation might actually be important in helping the spider live another day. But less about spiders that don't want to be in the water, and let's keep looking for that strange spider that is going to be in the water. I was told this would be the spot to look for this mysterious species, but making the long, dedicated trip to get here, having a great time with some of my best friends, we're out here in the freaking swamp, exploring a new habitat I've never been in before, and even getting up close with some animals I never thought I'd ever see, it seemed that one thing would plague my mind after this relatively successful trip. These mystery spiders would stay just that, a mystery. But while looking at some water striders, I heard Edwin say the words I've been wanting to hear ever since I first found out about this insane invasive spider. Oh, found it, over mm -hmm. here. Over here, you got the little spider? spider? Yeah, what? you sure? Right there on that leaf. Are you sure? Look. These just hang, see on, on the leaf? <gasps> oh, I see it. Oh, it's perfect. 
See the dots yeah. on the legs? That's how, pretty characteristic. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, he's, he's kind of shuffling about. All right. All right, I'm gonna catch it, I'm gonna catch it. All right. Why, why in my mouth? <laughs> mm. Dude, that thing is fast. Did it dart? It darted. Do you still see it? No, I don't. Shoot. That's, That's what, exactly oh, what I was thinking. Huge one. Oh, that thing's wow. bigger. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Where's my net? Keep uh, eyes on it. Keep an eyes on it. Keep an eyes on it. Big. Careful. I got it. Awesome. I got it. <sighs> Great catch. All right, what I have right here is something that I have wanted to see for an extremely long time, ever since I first learned of this species' existence. This is, I don't know. For the first time on this channel, I'm gonna have to be honest with you and say that not only do I not know what this is, science doesn't even know what this is right here. This is the exact mystery species of spider that I had talked about at the beginning. This incredibly strange looking species of spider right here that can be found out in the cypress swamps of southwestern Florida. Now, before we talk too much about this, I'm gonna try and get this spider in my hand and see if I can free handle it. Let's take a look. Got this insanely creepy looking spider on my hand right here. Now, I don't say that very often. I'm not the type that usually finds spiders very creepy, but look at those strange, long and thin legs covered in that distinctive kind of bluish white banding. The overall body being that dark brown color, except for more of those incredible shiny silvery spots almost. Now, I can describe how this spider looks to you, but that's about it. Here in Florida, no specimens have been collected of this mysterious spider species. So because of this, no one can tell what it is. Now many people have found this from pictures, including Edwin right here who helped us find this incredible, beautiful spider. But everything we know about this spider's existence here in Florida is completely anecdotal. Nothing has been published on this species yet, and it shows in how little we really know about it. What I can tell you is that this is in the superfamily Lycosoidea, which is a large group of close related spiders that includes things like the wolf spiders, the fishing spiders, the wandering spiders even. While it is pretty clear based on morphological evidence from pictures that this mystery species is in that group, scientists don't even know what family this is in. There's been some speculations that this is in the Pissaridae family, which is the same family that includes fishing spiders. Although some other people have speculated that these might be in the family Trichaliidae, which is a family that contains mostly neotropical species, like the bromeliad spiders. Now, because no one has actually dissected this and been able to look at internal morphological evidence to tell what these might be, I can't be certain, but just looking at this, it really does certainly look like the genus Thaumasia within the family Pissaridae, a genus of nursery web spiders that, like this one, are mostly aquatic. They share a similar overall appearance, and there are some species that have this pale silvery banding on them. We really can't know for sure until one of these is dissected by an expert with access to the necessary resources, publications, and scientific keys to be able to tell for sure exactly what this is. Now, one very interesting thing that gives us a cue as to where these invasive spiders came from is actually that there are a few pictures of a species that looks exactly like this that also has yet to be identified by scientists present in the Yucatan Peninsula, which of course is a match for many of the similarly aquatic Pissarid spiders also being found in the Neotropics. So, 
This species is likely an invasive from Central America that is making its completely quiet takeover over these cypress swamps here in southwestern Florida. And thankfully, what we have ourselves here is a male. Now, no, I'm not being sexist to spiders. Why this is important is because many spider keys are actually based on the male genitalia, which are located right at the front there. Those pedipalps, which are the structures that spiders usually use to guide food into their mouths, are modified in males to contain a structure that holds the sperm and is able to fit into females of the same species. And the shapes of these structures on the palpal bulbs are what a lot of the identification guides to spiders are based off of. So the fact that we have a male is very, very good. If we're able to get this specimen collected preserved and shipped off to an expert, there is a solid chance that this many year long mystery might be solved. That is exactly why I love just getting out into nature and looking for creatures like this. You never know when you can stumble across one of the most amazing animals out there. A relatively large aquatic species of spider invading from its native range in Central America that no one has been able to identify. Maybe up until now. Usually I'd say let's get this guy right back where we found it, but for a few reasons we're not going to release this one. Like I said, this is a very important specimen right here in terms of getting research done on finally identifying the species. Number two, there are a ton of these out here. These are extremely common. They have basically taken over these open water spots. And third, like I said, these are invasive. We should not be releasing them back into the wild after capturing them. But what a beautiful creature this is. After examination of the specimen, especially close-ups of the palpable bulb morphology, it seems to almost certainly be in the genus Thaumasia in the family Pissaridae. However, it is still unclear exactly what species in the genus it is, or even if it is a described species at all. While the overall appearance of the palps is a perfect match with the general structure of the male genitalia of Thaumasia, looking through the newest paper revising the genus reveals that the exact shape of the individual parts, like the median apophysis and the conductor, are not a perfect match with any of the individual described species within the genus. So while the mystery cannot be solved at this moment, this adventure and the specimen we caught is helping us move in the right direction towards finally knowing what the spider invading South Florida really is. Potentially, an undescribed species, maybe. Well, we can't be truly sure. Even though we didn't get the species ID we were hoping for, this trip was still one of the most amazing ones I've ever had. Besides making this contribution to science, exploring this habitat I'd never been in, and finding so many amazing animals with some great friends of mine made for the perfect night. If you're interested in learning about one of the other finds from this incredible trip, make sure to check out this video right here, where we look for wild chameleons. See you there!